Yeah, I was asked to uh, discuss the issue of an infinite regress and if that's possible. And uh, the tradi traditional Christianity uh, believes in eternality, that God is eternal, that God existed in the eternal now, God exists outside of time, and that when he created the first changing being, that's when time began. So God created time. Uh, the only alternative to that would be infinite time. And the whole concept of infinite time fails. I mean, this, this falls to Zeno's paradoxes. Zeno showed that if you're going to move from point A to point B, you have to first, if you assume an actual infinite, and see, Zeno didn't even realize he was assuming this, but Zeno was assuming an actual infinite set of points between point A and point B. Now, there's a potential infinite set, potential infinite sets, just, uh, just saying we could potentially divide space infinitely. That just means you can just keep going, keep going, but you would never finish the, the project. An actual infinite set would mean there's, there's actually, there's an actual infinite number of points in space between point A and point B. Well, there really isn't, and that's why movement is possible. But if there were an actual infinite set of points, it would be impossible to traverse them. And that Zeno proved that. It's impossible to move from point A to point B if there's an actual infinite set of points in between because first you'd have to get to the midpoint, but before you there, you get there, you'd have to get to the midpoint and on and on. Now, if there's only a, a finite uh, actual points, in other words, if space cannot be infinitely divided, then, then movement is possible. And we see that movement is possible. We move all the time. So uh, Zeno just did not realize that he was assuming uh, an actual infinite set of points, of finite points between point A and point B. And, um, but what he did prove, so in other words, movement is possible. Uh, he failed to try to prove that movement's impossible. But what he did prove, though, is that it is impossible to traverse an actual infinite set of finite points. So. That's my first point. If an actual infinite set of finite points exist, it would be impossible to traverse them, all of these points. So uh, if you believe that we have reached the present moment now, then there had to be a first moment in time. Time had to, be a be had to have a beginning because there had to be a first moment and only a finite number of moments before we reach the moment now. However, uh, there could not be an infinite number of moments in the past. If time is infinite, okay, there would be no first point, and you would never be able to traverse that actual infinite set as Zeno showed. Um, so then you would not reach the moment now. But we have reached the moment now, so therefore there's only a finite number of moments before the moment now. There had to be uh, a, a first moment. Now, uh, the other question comes up, can an actual infinite set exist outside of a mind? And I would argue no. If, if an actual infinite set of finite things existed outside of a mind, it would generate contradictions. Uh, if you had one set, all the whole numbers starting with one, one, two, three, four, five, going on infinitely, that's an infinite set. But if you had one-tenth of that set, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, it would be both one-tenth the size of the other set, but, it, but they're both infinite sets, so it'll also be equal in number to the other set, and that's contradictory. It can't be, they can't both be equal at the same time the same way, yet one be 10 times larger uh, than the other one. And so that would generate contradiction. So I do not believe an actual infinite set of finite things can exist outside uh, of minds. Now, uh, inside of a mind, um, that's a possibility. But then by definition, that mind would have to be uh, an infinite mind, i.e. The, the mind of God. Uh, but the only way for the infinite mind to know all of those things, the infinite mind would have to know all of those things in one eternal glance. Okay, so it's like in one thought, God knows everything there is to know, uh, we learn things. God doesn't. God doesn't learn things. He uh, he is omniscient. He always knew uh, all things. So we'll be learning more and more things about God throughout all eternity if we go to heaven. 
We'll be learning more and more about God throughout all eternity, and we'll never have him fully figured out. But the only place an actual infinite set of things can exist is in the mind, is in the mind of God, in an infinite mind. Um, outside of that, uh, an actual infinite set cannot exist, and even if one could exist, you wouldn't be able to traverse it, and so the universe had to have a beginning. Now, whatever has a beginning, has to ha something else has to cause it to come into existence. Um, because from nothing, nothing comes. Nothing is nothing, therefore nothing can do nothing, therefore nothing can cause nothing. If something has an absolute beginning, something else had to cause it to come into existence. So in, in science, science is the, is, the, is the study of natural effects, and you, you often look for the causes. Well, when you find out that all of nature needs a cause, you've run out of natural causes. By definition, the cause of nature would have to be a supernatural cause. So, um, so I would argue that science studying the physical things of nature actually leads us towards God's throne room and not away from it.